Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot Connection with the beginning of my Magic the Gathering Zendikar Rising unboxing series. Now, first, uh, a little bit of a story. A little bit of a story time. Um, this was supposed to be a four-part series, wherein I would do first the Commander deck, as you see here, then a booster bundle, then a sealed box of set boosters, followed by a sealed box of draft boosters. Yeah, um, my attempts to order a draft a box of set boosters and a set box of set boosters netted me, instead of one of each, two boxes of set boosters. And I have to just open one. And after trying a second time to fix this, once uh, and just not having the time to wait for to fix it again to wait on it anymore, I just said to hell with it and opened up the, one of the two set booster boxes and went through that uh, off camera. Anywho, let's get on to the uh, unboxing, shall we? I'm going to start things off with the uh, and no one the ruin thief uh, commander deck. As I recall, a no one was actually initially utilized in um, the first Zendikar block. Maybe not as the Ruin Thief, but he was in the. I'm pretty sure no one was in the set. Or was in the block. Uh, he wasn't in Zendikar. I don't think he was in Zendikar. So he may have been in um, the second Zendikar set, but still, he was in that first block. Alright, let's see what all we let's see what all garbage this came with. Of course we've got a deck box. Gives the name of the deck. Sneak attack. And we gotta look at uh, an on. Uh we have of course an insert. Learn to play commander. Which also includes a strategy. Strategy is not playing with this deck in particular. And we got a spin down life counter. I kind of. I like. Oh, shit. I actually kind of like these. They're, they're neat. Plus. They go beyond 20. So, you know. Which is always nice if you uh, like running a lot of life gain in your decks. And what else we got in here? Of course, we have the deck itself. No one. And the rest of the deck. And card. All right. Side for the moment. Yeah, we haven't done uh, we haven't done a magic unboxing so <sighs> Theros Beyond Death, I do believe. Um, I have bought a large portion of uh, M21 and some of Ikoria. We won't be doing an unboxing on those, even though I said I was going to do one for Ikoria. Um, but after I get, after I finish getting everything I want to get from the, well, basically getting boxes, Planeswalker decks, and so forth from from those two, I'll probably just do a highlights video, kind of a hey, these are the you know these are the bet the coolest things I pulled out of out of these. So yeah. Anyway. So first off, let's take a look at Anoan the Ruin Thief. He is a legendary vampire rogue for two colorless, one blue and one black. Other rogues you control get plus one, plus one. Okay. Now there is... Whenever one or more rogues you control deal combat damage to a player, that player mills a card for each one damage dealt to them. 
If the player mills at least one creature card this way, you draw a card. And he is a 2-4. Um, yeah, a, uh, a lar one of the, th a, a concept being introduced th with this set is the concept of a party. I think they're, it's kind of something they're setting up because, uh, I know some of the coming sets are actually based on, uh, based on some of the, uh, worlds from Dungeons and Dragons, so, that's kind of cool. And yes, I do totally plan to do unboxing on those, and maybe also try and get, like, uh, things like the, uh, some of the books about the uh the particular world so we can actually so i you know t discuss them a little as well all right so now for those unaware with a commander deck you could only with you have one copy you have one copy of each card um with the exception of basic lands so there will there won't be at least that many duplicates we'll say We've got Aetherize. It's a, it's a blue instant for three colorless and one blue. Return all. Return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. All right, that's always kind of nice. Next up, we have Distant Melody. It's a sorcery for three colorless and two blue. Choose a creature type. Draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. Okay. Next up is Factor Fiction. That's an instant for three colorless and one blue. Kind of loving that uh, picture there. Reveal the top five cards in your library. As a, as a, or an opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Next up is the Fairy Vandal, a 1-2 Fairy Rogue for one colorless and one blue with flaw... 1-2 Fairy Rogue with, uh, flaw, with that, uh, Flash and Flying for one colorless and one blue. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Fairy Vandal. Okay. I get the feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of rogues in this deck. Followed by the Invisible Stalker. A 1-1 one, one human rogue for, with hexproof for one colorless and one blue. Originally from the Innistrad set, if I remember correctly. And uh, he can't be blocked. Uh, the Innistrad blocks uh, had a heavy horror theme and in fact they the game designers found ways to incorporate lots of things, make incorporate lots of nods to uh, classic uh, horror movies. Um, you had a, a wizard that turned himself into a giant fly, for example. Um, an invisible stalker. Werewolves, vampires, eldritch horrors. Oh my. Next up, we've got Latchkey Fairy. The 3-1 Fairy Rogue with flying for three colors and one blue. And you've got Prowl. Two colorless, one blue. You may cast this for its Prowl cost if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a Fairy or Rogue. When Latchkey Fairy enters the battlefield, if its Prowl cost was paid, draw a card. Okay. That can work well with the... Uh, the other fairy, uh, the fairy vandal. Next up, Meringue River Prowler, a two-one human rogue for two colorless and one and one blue. Can't can't block and can't be blocked. You may cast them from your graveyard as long as you control a black or green permanent. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got Master Thief, a 2-2 human rogue with two colors and two blue. When Master Thief enters the battlefield, gain control of target artifact for as long as you control Master Thief. Okay. Military Intelligence. Uh, that's an oxymoron for you. An, intel an enchantment for one colorless and one blue. 
Whenever you attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. Okay. All right. Next up, we got Night Veil Sprite. A 1-2 Fairy Rogue with flying for one colorless and one blue. Whenever the Night Veil Sprite attacks, surveil one. Move the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Next up, we have Open Into Wonder. A sorcery for X colorless and two blue. X target creatures can't be blocked this turn. Until end of turn, those creatures gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got Slither Blade. A 1-2 Naga Rogue for one blue that cannot be blocked. I believe that is from the Amonkhet block. Next up, we have Triton Shore Stalker. A 1-1 Merfolk Rogue for one colorless that also cannot be blocked. Or one blue, not one colorless, one blue. Next up. Whirler Rogue, a 2-2 Human Rogue Artificer for two colorless and two blue. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one color, colorless stop tier artifact creature tokens with flying. Tap two untar untapped artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. And that's the uh, stop tier token. So you just a little 1-1 one, one flyer artifact creature. Next up, we've got Changeling Outcast. A 1-1 one, one, a one, one Shapeshifter for one black with the Changeling ability. Let's see what the Changeling ability does. This card is every creature type. Okay. Changeling Outcast can't block and can't be blocked. Next up we have Endless Obedience. Sorcery for four colorless and two black with con Convoke. So you can tap cards to uh, you tap other your creatures can help out help cast the spell if you creature you tap while cast a spell pays for one colorless or one mana of that creature's color okay put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control interesting next up we've got frog tosser banneret 1-1 one, one Goblin Rogue with haste for one colorless and one black. Goblin spells and rogue spells you ca cast cost one colorless less to cast. Next up we've got Marsh Flitter. A 1-1 one, one Fairy Rogue with flying for one, three colorless and one black. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one black goblin rogue creature tokens. Sacrifice a goblin. Marsh Flitter ha has base power to just 3-3 three, three until end of turn. And let's see... Yeah, there's those goblin rogue tokens. Simple 1-1. One, one. Yeah, excuse me a second. thing I forgot to do. Next up we have one of my favorite black spells, Murder. The sorcery for one colorless and two black. Destroy target creature. Plain and simple. Next up we've got Una's Blackguard, a 1-1 one, one fairy row with flying for one colorless and one black. When other, each other rogue creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Each, whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it goes coming damage to a player, that player discards a card. Okay. Next up is Price of Fame. An instant for three colorless and one black. The spell costs two less to cast if it targets a legendary creature. Destroy legendary creature. Destroy target creature. Surveil 2. Look at the top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on, on top of your library in any order. Okay. Next up, Rise from the Grave. It's a sorcery for four colorless and one black. That's one thing about Commander decks is there tends to be a lot of redundancy. Redundancy with different creatures, or with different cards. 
Poke target creature card from a graveyard into the battlefield under, onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie that should loot other colors and types. Okay. Next up, we've got the Stink Drinker Bandit. A 2 1 Goblin Rogue for three colorless and one black. He's got a prowl cost of one colorless and one black, which can be cat he can be cast for that if you don't come at damage to a player with this term of the goblin or rogue. Whenever a rogue you control attacks and isn't blocked, it gets plus two plus one until end of turn. We got Sir Conrad the Grim, a five four legendary human knight for three colorless and two black. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. One colorless, one black. Each player mills a card. They each put the top card of their library onto their graveyard. Okay. Next up, Zillaport Cutthroat. A 1-1 one, one human rogue ally for one colorless and one black. When Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Okay. Next up we've got Extract from Darkness. It's a sorcery for three colorless, one blue, and one black. Each player mills two cards. Then you put a creature card from, from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Okay. Follow next up, Soul Manipulation. And this is for one colorless, one blue, and one black. Choose one or both. Counter target creature spell, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That could be very useful. Hmm. Next up, we've got an artifact, Arcane, <clears throat> Arcane Signet. An artifact for two colorless. Tap. Add one man of any color to your commander's, or in your co commander's color identity. Okay. Uh, that's another thing about a commander deck. Commander, for those unaware, um, your deck consists of 100 cards, and the only colors you can use are the colors in your commander's color identity. So, for the purposes of this deck, commander identity is blue and black. Next up, we've got Commander's Sphere. Ah, it's a three cost artifact. It can be tapped, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, so then it can be sacrificed to allow you to draw a card. Next up, we've got Enigma Thief. 5-5 five, five Sphinx Rogue with flying for five colorless and two blue. It's got a prowl cost as well of three colorless and one blue. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, it returns to one target non-land permanent that player controls to its owner's hand. Okay. Next up, we have an equipment artifact, the Whisper Steel Dagger, which costs two colorless and one black. Has an equip. The equipped creature gets uh, plus two plus zero. Has an equipped cost of three, of three mana. Whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may cast a creature spell from that player's graveyard this turn. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. Okay. Next up, we have the Torius Throng. It's a uh, rogue tribal sorcery for three colorless and one blue. It's got a prowl cost of five colorless and one blue. Create X11 one, one black fairy rogue creature tokens of flying, where X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. If this spell's prowl cost was paid, take an, ex take, it, take an extra turn after this one. Wow. And we'll take a quick look at that uh, fairy rogue. Just a black one one black fairy rogue with flying. Simple enough. Okay. Next up we've got Scourge of Fleets. A 6-6 six, six Kraken for five colorless and two blue. When it enters the battle. The battlefield return each creature your opponent's control with toughness X or less with owner's hand, where X is the number of islands you control. Okay. Next up we have Stolen Identity. It's a sorcery for four colorless and two blue. Create a token as a copy of target of target artifact or creature. Has the cipher ability. 
You may then exile this, spell, this card and code it on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. Okay. Next up, we've got Faded Return. Black, an instant for four colorless and three black. Put target creature card from graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains indestructible. If it's your turn, scry two. Next up, Gonti, Lord of Luxury. Two, three legendary Aetherborn Rogue with Death Touch for two colorless and two black from way back in the Kaladesh block, if I remember correctly. When Gonti, Lord of Luxury, enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of the target opponent's library. Exile one of them face down, then put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order. You may look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were any mana of any type to cast that spell. Okay. Next up, we've got Ingaruk's Wake, a sorcery for seven colorless and two black. Destroy all creatures you don't control, all planeswalkers you don't control. Woof. Bit of a yee. Yikes, that's it. That's, uh, yeah. Next up, we've got Necromantic Selection. It's a sorcery for four colorless and three black. Destroy all creatures and return a creature card put into a graveyard this way to the battlefield under your control. It's a black zombie in addition to other, other colors and types. Exile Necromantic Selection. Ooh. Next up, we've got Night Howler, which is an enchant a 0-0 zero, zero enchantment creature Horror for one colorless and two black. Has the bestow ability for two colorless and two black as well. If you, if cast for its bestow cost, it's, an aura, it's considered an aura with enchant creature. Can the creature again it, if it's not attached to a creature? Night Heller and enchanted creature each get plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Okay. Which is why the zero zero makes sense. Next up, we've got Ogre Slumlord. A 3-3 three, three Ogre Rogue with three colors and two black. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token. Rats you control have death touch. Okay. Now let's take a quick look at one of those rat tokens. There we are. Simple enough. 1-1 one, one rat. Scurries in. Next up, we got Sep Sepulchral Primordial, a 5-4 avatar with Intimidate for 5 colorless and 2 black. Intimidate uh, means that it can be blocked except by artifact creatures and other creatures that share a color with it. Basically, it, it's the old uh, fear enchantment, creature enchantment. When Sepulchral Primordial enters the battlefield, for each opponent, you may put up one... Put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Okay. Next up, Consuming Aberration. It's a horror for three colors and one, one blue and one black. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyards. Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card, then puts those cards into their graveyard. Okay. All right. Next up, we've got Lazav, Demir Mastermind, a three-three shapeshifter with hexproof for two colorless and or for two blue and two black. Whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may have Lazav, Demir Mastermind, become a copy of that card. Since its since its name is Lazav, Demir Mastermind, it's legendary in addition to its other types, and its hexproof and this ability. Next up, we've got Notion Thief. A 3-1 human rogue with flash for two colorless, one blue, and one black. If an opponent would draw a card except the first time when they draw on each of their draw steps, instead that, that player skips that draw and you draw a card. Okay. Next up, Una, Queen of the Fey. Legendary fairy wizard with flying for five or legendary five or a five-five legendary fairy wizard with flying for three colorless and a combination of Either three blue or black mana, or and three mana, either blue or black, I should say. X colorless, and then either one blue or black mana. Choose a color. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of your library. 
For each card of the chosen color exiled this way, create a 1-1 blue, one, one blue and black fairy rogue creature token with flying. Okay. I'm guessing these also count. So that's it. Next up we have Slimgar, Slimgar's Command. An instant for three colorless, one blue and one black. Choose two. Counter non -tar target non creature spell. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until on a turn. Destroy target planeswalker. Okay. Next up is Spinal Embrace. It's an instant for three colorless, two blue and one black. Cast a spell only during combat. Untap target creature you don't control and gain control of it. It gains haste until on a turn. At the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice it. If you do, you gain life equal to its toughness. Okay. Next up, we've got Sig, River Cutthroat. A 1 3 legendary Merfolk Road for 2 mana, either blue or black. At the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost 3 or more life this turn, you may draw a card. Okay. We have the Black Blade Reforged. Legendary equipment for two mana. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. To equip a legendary creature costs three mana. To equip a, equip a non-legendary creature costs seven mana. Next up we have the Bone Horde. It's a, also an equipment artifact with the, for, four, for four mana with the Living Weapon uh, ability. Um, when this enters the battlefield, you create a 0, zero black germ creature token that attached the uh, equipment to it. The equipped creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. It has an equipped cost of 2. But it brings its own equipper, so yeah. Next up, Obelisk of Erd. It's a 6, it's a six mana artifact with Convoke. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus two, plus two. Very nice. Not legendary either. Hmm. Next up, we've got Scythe Claw. It's a quick, uh, living weapon for five mana. Uh, it does the same thing as the Bone Horde. You create a black germ creature token to it and immediately equip the, this to the, to the germ. The quick creature is plus one, plus one. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up and has an equip cost of three. Next up, we have the Demir Key Room, which is an artifact for three mana. Uh, it can be tapped at either one blue or one black. For one blue and one black, it becomes a two two blue and black horror artifact creature until end of turn and can't be blocked, and, which can't be blocked. Followed by the Demir Locket, also a three mana artifact. We tap to add either one blue or one black to your uh, mana pool. Um, you can tap it and spend four mana, four either four blue blue and or black mana, and sacrifice it to draw two cards. We have the Demir Signet, an artifact for two mana. Uh, we tap to add one blue and one black. Oh, and you pay one mana to do that. Next up, we have the Heirloom Blade. It's a equipment for uh, three mana. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus one. When the, when it, whenever a equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. Put that card into your hand and the rest onto the bottom on the bottom of your library in a random order. It has an equipped cost of one. Okay. Next up, we have the Mind Stone. It's an artifact for two mana. We tap to add one colorless mana one specifically colorless mana to your uh, mana pool. For one mana and then tapping it, you sac and sacrificing the Mind Stone, draw a card. Next up we have the Soul Ring. A one, a artifact for one mana. Um, it can be tapped to add two, to add two colorless mana specifically to your uh, mana pool. Then we have the Landwise, we have the Command Tower. Tap it to add one mana of of any color of your creature, or your commander's uh, color identity. The mirror aqueduct enters the battlefield tapped. 
When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to, to its owner's hand, and then it can be it itself can be tapped to add one blue and one black. Demir Guildgate also enters the battlefield tapped, can be tapped to add either one blue or one black. Dismal Backwater enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you gain one life, can be tapped for one blue or one black. Joar Isle Refuge enters the battlefield tapped. When it does so, it, you gain one life. Tap it to add one blue or one black. Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield tap. It can be tapped to add one colorless to your mana pool. Two, color, two mana, tap, sacrifice Myriad Landscape. Search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them in on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Okay. Next up, Rogue's Passage. We tap to add one colorless mana. Four mana, tap, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Okay, that, that's kind of useful. I like the idea of basically being able to say, oh yeah, can't block that guy. Next up, Submerged Boneyard, which also, which of course there is the battlefield tapped. Can we tap to add either blue or black to your mana pool? Ah, we got a couple, uh, we got a few, uh, Missed a few creatures, it looks like. Got a Merfolk Wind Robber. It's a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Rogue for 1 blue. With flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player draws a card. You can sacrifice the Merfolk Wind Robber to draw a card. Activate this ability only if an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. Okay. Next up we have the Sherford Infiltrator. 2-3 Merfolk Rogue for 3 colorless and 1 blue. Tap another untapped rogue, rogue you control. Surefooted infiltrator can be blocked, can't be blocked this turn. Whatever deals combat damage from a player, draw a card. Okay. Next up we have the Soaring Thought Thief. A 1-3 human rogue with flash and flying for one colorless and one, or one blue and one black. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, rogues you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards. Okay, then we got a bunch of uh, islands. That's the picture that they use for these. As well as a bunch of uh, swamps. And there's the picture we used to get for those. Alright, so that's the first of these uh, covered. Now, let's take a look at the... Land's Wrath deck featuring Obun, Moldaya Ancestor. I think he's. I don't recall seeing him in any, either of those previous Zendikar blocks. But I also don't have a card from all of those, so you get the idea. actually an interesting take on commander decks for uh, wizards. Usually commander decks will have uh, no, 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 no. This had uh, additional some additional potential commanders too. So, yeah, okay. Just like the others did. First off, let's take a look at our commander, or our primary commander. Oban, Moldaya Ancestor. Legendary Elf Spirit, a 3-3 three, three Legendary Elf Spirit for one colorless, one red, one green, and one white. Okay, so all five colors are represented in the, these commander decks. Neat. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, up to one target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until the end of turn, where X is, a, is Oban's power. It's still a land. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battle under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Okay. Alrighty. Now these are a. But well, usually, the pre made commander decks you get. Yes, you do get alternate commanders, but it's usually. Like, there are. There's actually quite a few alternate commanders in each one, and there's like a handful where it's like, yeah, you can use any of these, of these ones. Alright, so. Let's actually go through this and maybe. Organize it a bit. Enchantments. Don't worry, everybody. We're almost ready to rock and roll. I seriously should have done this with the last uh, one, too. Okay. Lands. Now, the creatures won't be too well organized because, well, yeah. Actually, nothing's really all that well organized. Alright, so, start off with the. Marasa Root Grazer. A 2 3 beast with vigilance for one green and one white. You can tap it. You can tap it and do one of the following: either put a basic land from your hand and onto the battlefield, or return target basic land you control to its owner's hand. Okay. Next up, we have the Sylvan Advocate, a two-three elf druid ally with vigilance for one colorless and one green. As long as you control six or more lands, Sylvan Advocate and land creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Okay. Next up, we've got Waker of the Wilds, a 3-3 Merfolk Shaman for, for two colorless and two, blue, and two green. X mana, X then two colorless, two, X then two green. 
Put X plus one plus one counters on target land you control. That land becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Okay. Next up we have Living Twister. A two five elemental for two red and one green. For one colorless and one red, you may just end discarding a land card. Living Twister deals two damage to any target. One green. Return a tapped land you control to its owner's hand. Okay. Next up, Mina and Den. Four four legendary elf allies for two colorless, one red and one green. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. One red, one green. Return a land you control to his owner's hand. Dark creature gains trample until end of turn. Okay. And this is what I mean with having multiple uh, commanders. Next up, Omnath, Locus of Rage. 5-5 five, five legendary elemental for 3 colorless, 2 red, and 2 green. And Omnath's got landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under, under control, create a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token. Whenever Omnath, Locus of Rage, or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals 3 damage to any target. Okay. Next up, Multani, Yabba Meyer's Avatar. A zero zero legendary elemental avatar for with reach and trample for four colorless and two green. Uh, Multani Abomai's avatar is plus one plus one for each land you control each land card in your graveyard. One colorless, one green. Return two cards you control to their owner's hand. Return Multani from your graveyard to your hand. Next up, we've got Rampaging Bailoffs. 6-6 six, six beasts with trample for 4 colorless and 2 green. We've all, it's also got landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. That's from the original Zendikar set, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Back then it was a mythic. Still pretty badass. Next up, we've got Trove Warden. A 3-4 cat beast with vigilance for 2 colorless and 2 white. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile target uh, permanent card from, with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. When Trove Warden dies, put each permanent card exiled it with it in, onto the battlefield under your control of that card's owner. Okay. Next up, we've got Geode Rager. 4 3 elemental with first strike for four colorless and two red. Also has the landfall ability. So whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may go to each creature target player controls. Based until your next turn, these creatures attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if it also if able. Next up, we've got the Abomination Angel, a six-six angel with flying for three colorless and three white. That's an oldie. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under, under control, you may exile a target non-land permanent other than Abomination Angel. When it leaves the battlefield, return all cards exiled with it to the battlefield under their owner's control. Next up, Emeria Angel. A 3-3 angel with flying for two colorless and two white. Also has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying. Next up, Emeria Shepherd. A 4-4 angel with flying for 5 colors, colorless and 2 white. To landfall as well. Um, you may return to non-land permanent card, card from your graveyard to your hand. If that land is a plane. If the land enters the plane, enters the battlefield as a plains, you may return the, the non-land permanent to the battlefield instead. Okay. Alright. Next up. Hour of Revelations. A sorcery for 3 colorless and 3 white. It costs three colorless. It only costs three white mana to cast. If there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield, destroy all non-land permanents. Yikes! Next up, we have Planar Outbursts. It's a sorcery for three colorless and two white. Destroy all non-land creatures. Has Awaken four for five colorless and three white. If if uh, cast for five colors and three white, also put four plus one plus one counters on target land you control and it becomes an elemental with haste. Next up, we've got the Sun Titan, 
a 6 6 giant with vigilance for four colorless and two white. Also an oldie. Bit of an oldie, kind of. Never thought I'd call the Titans oldies. Whenever the Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return a target permanent card with a converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Together Forever. It's an enchantment for two white. When it enters the battlefield, support two. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Choose target creature with a counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to its owner's hand. Next up, Abundance. Two. Shaman for two colors, two green. If you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non land or reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen land. Put that card in your hand and put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. Alright. Oh, whoops. That, no. Oh, oopsie. No point in going. But... Okay, we're still, so that was supposed to be with the enchantments, not the uh, creatures. Next up, we have the Satyr Wave, Wavefinder, which is a 1 1 Satyr for 1 colorless and 1 green. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 4 cards of your library, put a land card from among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. Next up, Spore Mound, a 3-3 three, three Fungus for 3 colorless and 2 green. It's got Landfall, uh, create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling uh, Creature Token. Let's take a quick look at the Sapperling Token. Simple enough. Also, there's the Beast Token that uh, is created by the uh, Baloths. And the bird token created by the angel. Elementals. Oh, wait. Red green elementals. Green elementals. We've got Spring Bloom Druid, a 1 1 Elf Druid for two colorless and one green. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a land. If you do, search your library from two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Okay. Next up, we have Tusk Guard Captain, a 2 3 human warrior with, outla or with the Outlast ability for two colorless and one green. And with an outlast cost of one of one green. So outlast. Green. One green, tap, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Outlast only is a sorcery. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trampled. Okay. Yeah. Next up we have Yabamaya Elder. Two one human druid for one colorless and two green. When it dies, you may search your library for the two basic land cards, reveal them, put them on, into your hand, and shuffle your library. You may sacrifice the elder and to draw or two colorless, you may and sacrificing the elder, you may draw a card. Next up, Keeper of Fables, a four-five cat for three colorless and two green. Whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Next up we've got Fertilid. A zero zero elemental for two colorless and one green. You think that's what creates those green elementals? And there's a battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. For one colorless and one green, and removing a plus one plus one counter. Oh, okay. Target player searches their library for basic land, puts it into the battlefield tap, then shuffles their library. Okay, alright, I see. Next up we have the Elvish Rejuvenator, a one one elf druid for two colorless and one green. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield to tap. Put the rest on the battlefield or on the bottom of your library in a random order. Next up, Embodiment of Insight, a 4-4 elemental with vigilance for four colorless and one green. Land creatures you control have vigilance. Also has landfall. Uh, basically have target land you control became a 3-3 elemental creature with haste land of turn and it is still land. Next up, Evolution Sage, a 3-2 Elf Druid for two colorless and one, one green. 
Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. Choose any number of permanency in our players, then give each, uh, each another counter of each kind, kind already there. Okay. Proliferate is always a fun uh, ability to see. Was a little, uh, they get a little hand, out of hand there back here in New with poison counters, but you know. Next up, we've got Abzan Falconer, the 2 3 human soldier for two colorless and one white. He's also got Outlast um, for one from one white instead of one green. Uh, but yeah, you pay one white, tap him, and put a plus one plus one counter on him, but only as a sorcery. Creatures you control with a plus one plus one counter have flying. Okay. Next up, we've got the Elite Scale Guard, a 2 3 human soldier with, with, for four colorless and one white. When it enters the battlefield, bolster two. Choose a creature with the lowest, with the least toughness among creatures you control, but two plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. Okay. Next up, we've got Core Cartographer, a 2 2 core scout for three colorless and one white. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card. Put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Next up, we've got Acidic Slime, a 2 2 ooze with Death Touch for three colorless and two green. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Okay. Next up, we have Armorcraft Judge. A 3-3 three, three Elf Artificer for 3 colorless and 1 green. I think that's also from Kaladesh. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Okay. Next up is the Beanstalk Giant. It's a uh, giant for 6 colorless and 1 green. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. It has the uh, is also it has the adventure sorcery or sorcery adventure uh, or the the adventure sorcery fertile footsteps for two colors and one green. Search your library for a basic land card, put it down on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Okay, all right. Basically, you play him as either a sorcery or as a creature. Then we got the art our arcane signet. So we have Sandstone Oracle, which is a 4-4 uh, Artifact Sphinx with flying for 7 mana. When it enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. If that player has more cards in hand than you, draw cards equal to the difference. Okay. Next up, we've got the Scare Tiller. A 1-4 Scarecrow for 4 mana. When it becomes tapped, choose one. Put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Got our soul ring. Got the Seer's Sundial. It's an artifact for four mana. It has the landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, pay two mana. If you do, draw a card. Enchantment. Moving on, moving on to enchantments. For real this time. That should have been there either. More of that. Yeah, we got a few things that were uh, mistakenly put in the wrong spot because, well, idiot. So I'm going to rectify that right quick. Don't, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. ID 10T errors. You got to love them. All right, so Rites of Flourishing. It's an enchantment for two color Two colorless and one green. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws draws an additional card. Each player may play an additional land on each of their turns. Okay, alright, I like it. 
Next up we have The Mending of Dominaria. It's a saga enchantment. Now the way these work, as it, when it en enters and after your draw step, add a lore counter. Sacrifice it after you have three. At uh, one and two lore counters, mill two cards, then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. At three, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. Okay, all right. Next up we have Zendikar's Royal. It's an enchantment for three colorless and two green. Has the landfall ability. Um, this is okay. This is where we are green. Our two two green elemental creature tokens. Okay. Next up, we've got retreat to Kazandu. It's an enchantment for two colorless and one green. Also has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, or you gain two life. Next up. Colony Heart Expedition. It's an enchantment for one colorless and one green. It has landfall. Put a quest counter on Colony Heart Expedition. Remove three quest counters from, from the expedition and sacrifice it. Search your library for the two basic land cards that put them into the battlefield on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Okay. Retreat to Emeria. Three colorless, one white enchantment with landfall. Uh Choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one white core ally creature token. Creatures you control get plus one plus one until, end until the end of turn. And there is the core ally token right quick. Next up, Banishing Light. It's an enchantment for two colorless and one, and one white. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. Okay. Next up, we got Rotting Regrowth. It's an instant for two colorless and one green. Sacrifice lands. Here's your library for the two basic land cards. Put them onto the back of the tap, then shuffle your library. Okay. Next up, Sylvan Reclamation. It's an instant for three colorless, one green, and one white. Exile to two target artifacts and or enchantments. Basic land cycling for two colorless. Discard this card. Search your library for basic land card, reveal it, put, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Okay. Next up, Naya Charm. It's an instant that costs one, one red, one green, and one white. Choose one of the following effects. Deal three, deal three damage to target creature. Return to target, creature, target card from a graveyard to, uh, to its owner's hand. Tap all creatures target player controls. Okay. Next up, we have Return of the Wild Speaker. And this is for four colorless and one green. Also has a choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. Okay. Next up, we got Inspiring Call. An instant for two colorless and one green. Draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. These creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. Okay. Next up, we have Harrow. It's an instant for two colorless and one green, and as an additional cost, to cast it, sacrifice a land. Search your library for two basic land cards. Put them put them onto the battlefield. Not tapped, just put them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Okay? Next up we have Condemn. It's an instant for one white. Put target attacking your creature on the bottom of its owner's library. Its controller gains light equal to its toughness. Next up we have Crush Contraband. An instant for three colorless and one white. Also a choose one. Well, choose one or both. Exile target artifact, exile target enchantment. Ooh. Now we have one as both a, an instant and a sorcery. As an instant, we have Struggle. Shots two colorless and one red. Struggle deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. Then we have Survive, a sorcery. As the aftermath ability. Cast a spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. Each player shuffles their graveyard into their library. Okay. Interesting. Next up we have Treacherous Terrain. It's a sorcery for six colorless, one red, and one green. It 
deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of card lands that the player controls. That's, and basic land cycling up two for two colorless. Next up we have Ground Assault, a sorcery for one red, one green. Uh, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. Let's go over there. Next up we have Nissa's Renewal. Five colorless, one green sorcery. Search your library for up to up to three basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. You gain seven life. Nice. Next up we have Kodama's Reach. It's an arcane sorcery, though that really doesn't mean much in this in this. For two colorless and one green. Search your library for the two basic land cards, reveal those cards, put one into the battlefield tap and the other into your hand. Then shuffle your library. It's actually, it's actually, I used to use that quite a bit. It's from the uh, Kamigawa block. Sadly, Kamigawa is a uh, plane that I don't think we'll really want to ever see revisited. Next up, we have Harmonize. Sorcery for two colorless and two green. Draw three cards, plain and simple. Next up, we have Far Wanderings for. Sorcery for two colorless and one green. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, shuffle library. Threshold. If seven or more cards are in your graveyard, instead, search your library for the three basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tap, shuffle library. We've got uh, Circtuous Route. Three colorless, one green sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards. Put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So this is from one of the Rab one of the uh, later Ravnica blocks, then. Alright, so looking at our non-basic lands, we've got the Needle Spires, which enter the battlefield tapped. Generate uh, red or white. For two red or for two colors, as well as one red, one white, they become a two-one red and white elemental creature with double strike on a turn that is still a land. We have Blighted Woodland. We tap to add one colorless. For three colorless, green, tapping it and sacrificing it. Search your library for two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tap, shuffle your library. Boros Garrison is tapped. Return land you control is on his hand. Tap to add uh, one red, one white. Boros Guildgate. And as battlefield tapped, tap one. One red or one white. Command Tower. We already went over that last with the last deck. Cryptic Caves. Add one colorless. Uh, one colorless tap. Sacrifice it. Draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control five or more lands. Evolving Wilds. The tap and sacrificed. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Mm -hmm. Gruel Guildgate. Enters the battlefield tapped, generates either one red or one green mana. Do love me some Gruel stuff. Gruel Turf. Enters tapped. Return a land you control to its owner's hand. Tap to add one red and one green. God, I haven't seen Gruel Turf for ages. Next up, we've got Jungle Shrine. Enters the battlefield tapped, and it can be later it can be tapped to add either one red, green, or white mana to your mana pool. Croson Verge enters the battlefield tapped. Tapped to add one colorless mana. Two colorless tap sacrifice. Search your library for a forest card or, and a plains card. Put one on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Interesting. Myriad Landscape, which we also saw in the last one. Naya Panorama. Uh, tapped at one colorless. That would look really cool with the full art, I would think. One colorless. Tap. Sacrifice. Search the library for a basic mountain, forest, or plains. Put on the battlefield. Tap. Shuffle library. Celestia Guildgate. And here's tapped. One green or one white.
Celestia Sanctuary. There's tapped. Return a land you control to Utara's hand. Add one green and one white. Terramorphic Expanse. It's Evolving Wilds. It's the older version of Evolving Wilds. Plain and simple. Tap, sacrifice. Oh, there's, there's the picture. Tap it, sacrifice it. Search your library for basic land card. Battlefield tap, shuffle library. We get. To, here's our planes. Our mountain. And our forest. All right, that's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off. Saying, oh, uh, we will be back as soon as possible with the to uh, crack open a bundle, and then we'll be opening up a set booster box. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying live long and rock hard.